Hello, I'm the Millennial Mr. Daycock, and today I'm going to be introducing you to differential equations. So, what is a differential equation? Well, you've likely already seen them before. This here is a differential equation, and it's very, very easy to solve. We have dy by dx equals 4x, and we're asked to find the general solution to it. And how, well, what does that mean? It means just integrating it in this case. So we're going to integrate it, and we're going to end up with y equals the integral of 4x with respect to x. And we get y equals the integral of 4x is going to be 2x squared, because we add 1 to the power, and it's a power of 1, and then divide by the new power, and then write plus c. Very, very simple. We've just answered that question. So... What's interesting about this? What makes this a differential equation? What makes it solving it? So solving the di a differential equation effectively means getting rid of the dy by dx and just leaving us with y equals something. Well, not necessarily y equals something. Sometimes you might be left with y squared plus x squared equals 3 or something like that. It doesn't have to be y equals but very often that's the nice form that you want to get it into. The key thing is we're left with just y's and x's in terms of what we expect. So that's what solving a differential equation is, getting it in terms of y and x. Why is it a general solution? Well, that's because of this plus c. So in this case, our solution, if we were to graph it, it's 2x squared, so it's a nice quadratic, and that's one possible solution, but it could be higher up. It could be something like this, or it could be something like this. It, we've got shifts involved. This plus C means that although we pretty much know what the answer is, there is some general form in there. There's a shift up and down. OK, so that's the basic concept of a differential equation. Ones like this are fairly easy to solve, just use integration. What we're going to be looking at is ones which are a little bit more difficult to solve, which are less obvious. So here, to find the general solution of the differential equation dy by dx equals y. Now this here, you sort of have to ask yourself, what does that even mean? Well, what it means is, I'm looking for a function y, such that when I differentiate, so when I differentiate it, I'm left with, if I do d by dx, I'm still left with y. My derivative, dy by dx, should be the same as the function itself. So, what function is that going to be? I mean, here we can just sort of think about it and go, well, actually, I know my answer to that. What function differentiates to itself? Well, it tells me that y... Well, the answer to that has got to be y equals e to the x. And there we go. We've just solved our differential equation. And we can even check if y equals e to the x, what does dy by dx equal? Well, it equals e to the x. And therefore, is it true that dy by dx equals y? Yes. So we've solved it. Except hopefully, some of you will be thinking, wait a minute, no, because we need this general solution. That's what this is a particular solution, and we don't know if that's the right one. We need the general solution. So, what makes sense? Well, very, very tempting to go for y equals e to the x plus c. But let's check. Well, if y equals e to the x plus c, then dy by dx is just equal to e to the x differentiates to e to the x but the c differentiates to zero. And the question is, is it the case that dy by dx equals y? And the answer is no. So this doesn't work. Although this is definitely a solution, y equals e to the x is a solution, y equals e to the x plus c is not our general solution. So what is? Now I'm going to tell you, and in a, later on in the video we're going to come back to it and see why that is, but the answer is y 
it has to be equal to some multiple of e to the x. Because if I differentiate a multiple of e to the x, and when it's a multiple, we tend to use a rather than c for our constant. So we're going to get capital A multiplied by e to the x, where capital A is just a constant. Here's our solution. Why? Well, if I dy by the exit, then I end up with a e to the x again, and those are equal. And that is a general solution, because this gives a whole field of curves. Not shifts, these aren't shifts anymore, these are stretches. But if I have my basic curve like that, then I could have another one like that. And so on and so forth. So I get lots and lots of different curves still, and so this is a general solution. Okay, let's have a look at the method we're going to use. And this is the most basic method for solving differential equations beyond just integration. And it's called separating the variables. Find the general solution of the differential equation dy by dx is equal to xy squared. So this is saying that whatever my function is, when I differentiate it, I should be equal to that function squared multiplied by an x. Which is, you know, a little bit odd, but that could happen and we can still solve it. Now, why is this separable? It's separable because we have some function of x multiplied by some function of y equal to dy by dx. And if you can ever rearrange a differential equation into that form, and that shouldn't be an f, that should be a g because we've got no guarantee it's the same function, some other function of y. If you could ever rearrange a differential equation into this form, it is separable and relatively easy to solve. Because what you do is you divide by the function of y. So in this case, g of y. Or in our example, dy by dx equals xy squared, we're going to divide both sides by y squared. And that gives us 1 over y squared dy by dx is equal to just x. And then, strictly speaking, this next step I'm going to do is not allowed, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, mathematically, there's more detail going into this than it appears to be from what I'm about to do. But what, in the vast majority of the cases, this is equivalent to the correct mathematical method. So what I'm going to do is multiply by dx. And we're left with 1 over y squared dy is equal to x dx. I'm treating that derivative like a fraction. Technically not correct, but it works. Now, at this point, I'm just going to integrate both sides and add an integral sign on. And now I've just got two integrals. I'm integrating one side in terms of y with respect to y, and the other side in, I'm integrating x's with respect to x. So it's all fine. So what I'm doing here is that I've got to deal with the integral of y to the negative 2 dy equal to the integral of x dx. Both of those are perfectly simple integrals. The integral of y to the minus 2 dy becomes y to the minus 1 and then divide by minus 1, so minus y, and that's equal to x integrates to a half x squared. And there we go. Pretty much done. Two things to remember. One is the plus c, and because this is when we've done the integration, this is when we must add the plus c. It must be done straight after the integration. Second, we want to rearrange this here to be in a nice form. So we've got minus 1 over y is equal to 1 half of x squared plus some c. Again, just turn that into um, fraction form rather than power form. And then I'm going to multiply by negative 1. Multiply each side by negative 1, so I get positive y. So I get 1 over y is equal to negative a half x 
strictly speaking minus c, but I can actually just say, if I say c is equal to minus c equals to pot c1, I can put it as plus c1, just some other c, maybe call that c0, because it's just a constant, so it doesn't really matter how I write it. And then I've got 1 over y equals that, so therefore y must be equal to 1 over c1 minus a half of x squared by just flipping the fraction. And there we go. y equals 1 over c1 minus a half x squared is our solution. And notice we do have a general solution because we have got this constant here, but notice the constant is not on the end. It is not a thing that got added on to the end, it got added on part way through, and then our rearrangement gave it in a completely different place to where we'd expect. Our rearrangement left it in the middle of the fraction, right underneath, and so we've got 1 over c1 minus a half x squared. And there we go. And that's a little clue, that's a little clue to what was happening in the last one. But we've got one more to go through, and then we'll go back to that 1 with dy by dx equals y and see how we can solve that and see how we can justify that it's a multiplied by e to the x rather than plus c. Okay, find the general solution of the differential equation dy by dx is equal to 4x cubed sec y. In this one, exactly the same process, we are going to divide by the function of y. And that's what we're always going to do. So we're going to get 1 over sec y is going to be equal to 4x cubed. Except, of course, clearly I just forgot to remember the dy by dx there, which is a little bit important. And now I'm going to multiply by dx. Not allowed, but I'm what I'm going to do. I'm going to end up with 1 over sec y dy is equal to 4 x cubed dx. And then I'm going to remember that in fact sec y is equal to 1 over cosine of y, which means 1 over sec y is equal to cosine of y. And so I'm just going to replace that with cosine y. And then integrate both sides. And then we can just work it out. Integral of cosine is sine y. Integral of 4x cubed is, in fact, just x to the power of 4, because we add 1 to the power, then divide by 4, so we've got x to the 4, and then plus c. And then what's y? Well, therefore, y must be equal to inverse sine, or arc sine, of x to the power of 4 plus c. And again, notice the plus c, we haven't got plus c on the end, the actual plus c is inside this arc sign. And there you go. That is how you find the general solution, the process you use to find the general solution of a separable differential equation. OK, now I promise we go back to that previous one, the one where we had dy by dx equal to y, and I would recommend pausing now and giving it a go yourself, seeing if you can use this process to justify why it's going to be, our answer is going to be y equal to a e to the x. Okay, so what you should have done is you should have divided by y and left yourself with 1 over y dy by dx equals 1, multiply by the dx, and we get 1 over y dy is equal to 1 dx, and then we integrate both sides, and the integral of 1 over y dy is the natural log of y. Strictly speaking with the modulus, but it'll turn out not to matter, and that's going to be equal to, the integral of 1 is x plus c. Now, the natural log of y, well, if we 
invert the natural log, the opposite of natural log is put into the power. So we're going, to, we're going to e to the power of each side. So I'm going to end up with the modulus of y is equal to e to the power of x plus c. And that means that y is equal to plus or minus e to the x plus c, because that's what a modulus means. OK, so where does that a come from? Well, it comes from our power rule. And we say if we, y is going to be equal to plus or minus, well, e to the x plus c, if I'm adding the powers, I can write that as e to the x multiplied by e to the c. Or I can write it the other way around and go y is equal to plus or minus e to the c multiplied by e to the x. And then what I do is I define a to be equal to the positive or negative e to the c. And because that's just a constant, this is just some constant. We don't know necessarily what the constant is, but it is just a constant. And the fact that it might be positive or negative is accounted for inherently in the idea of it just being a constant. And so my answer is y equals a e to the x, where my a is this whole bit here just represented in a single constant form. OK, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've got insight into general ideas of differential equations. And next time we'll be looking at particular solutions and how we get particular solutions with given boundary conditions. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.